Good morning. Good morning. Let me make sure I've got this on today. There we go. Grace and peace be to you from God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to welcome you to this service for First Presbyterian Church here in Pilot Mountain for this Sunday, August 1st, 2021. A few announcements. Uh, there is a flower sign-up sheet on the notice board in the office lobby right outside here. And Pilot Mountain is always, or Pilot Mountain Outreach is always looking for volunteers. And this month they need the following items: uh, pasta, rice, and soup kits. And we will be until we get a, a couple of collection uh, baskets. Be taking those up here in the front uh, at the steps here for the pulpit area. Are there any announcements that I might have missed? If not, would you please join me in our call to worship printed in your bulletin. We do not live by bread alone, but by the word who became flesh and dwells among us. Christ is the true bread of heaven, the man of freedom. Come, let us worship and give thanks.
Scripture tells us if we say that we have no sin, we are found to be lying and God is not with us. So let us join together, confessing to God and to each other our sins and our unison prayer of confession. Let us pray. Holy One, whose love and justice condemn us, whose mercy and kindness feed us, we confess our sins and pray for your forgiveness. What terrible suffering we have unleashed. We have used other persons without regard for their dignity. We have abused the earth without care for its beauty or concern for future life. We have sought to bargain with you to smooth our way to heaven. God, change us. Put the spirit of Christ within us and cause us to grow into mature, faithful disciples of the one who came from you to save us from our sin. Free us from captivity to our selfishness. Bind us to the whole body of Christ. And let us bear witness to the truth that your love holds everything together in perfect unity. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the bread of life God sends is the offering of the only begotten Son. Whoever comes in Jesus Christ shall never be hungry. Whoever believes in Him shall never thirst. Believe the Gospel. In Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. 
They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And our second reading comes from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. Paul writes, I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with humi all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. And when it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the body of the work of ministry, for building up of the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into Him, who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One thing that I like to do in my spare time, when I get some spare time, is to watch a good movie. It may be a thriller, a drama, a comedy. I tend to like them all. But there's one type of movie that I like more than others, and this is action-adventure films. Ones that can be so over the top that you have to laugh and shake your head at some of the stunts and some of the dialogue and some of the storyline. But there's one kind of action-adventure that I like more than others, and that's the superhero. And in 2008, a new kind of superhero movie was released and came to the big screen. And I did not see it in the theaters, but when I did see it, I fell in love with the series that it began. That movie was Iron Man, and began what is now known as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, with more than a dozen movies in this genre. And throughout these movies, there are diverse characters with their own abilities and their own works. And the movies are, that are singular are lots of fun to watch. But in 2012, there was a movie that came out that brought the singular characters into one team, the Avengers. And in this movie, the singular characters come together to fight the world taking over of the space aliens. It's a lot of fun to watch. And then after the movie, there have been three other Avengers movies, each one more elaborate than the, than the one previous. And in the last film, all the characters, but a certain few, are brought together every single one, minor and major characters, to fight the biggest and baddest villain that they've had to face. And no spoiler here, they, they win in the end. That's what happens in most of these movies, except for a few where they're trying to build up for a next movie. It's what is expected and what is delivered. And they are maybe formulaic, but boy, they are a lot of fun to watch. Now you may be wondering what superhero movies has to do with my sermon today. But let me explain. In each of the individual movies, there's a focus on what one superhero can do. Sometimes there's another superhero who is introduced and their capabilities are also shown. But when they all come together, as in the Avengers films, 
They unite to form one team, each using their abilities to fight off the bad guys. They are united, but they are still individuals. And for the past couple of weeks, I've been preaching from Ephesians and talking about how Paul is communicating to this church and several others to help them in their Christian life. I have stated that the first three chapters are doctrine that tell the people what God has done for them and what God is doing for them. Last week I touched on a prayer that we said was the hinge of the three chapters going into the next three chapters. Showing God's love and overcoming divisions and an obstacle that might be in front of the church for whom Paul is writing. And so today we will be looking at the unity of the church, though there may be differences in the, among the members. Now today we begin a new section of the letter. The first three, as I said, dealt with doctrine. The last three deal with ethics. Ethics is how we live and relate to other people. Doctrine is how we relate to God. In other words, ethics, though, is how to put the theology that they have learned into practice. Now, the first thing that Paul wants them to do is to lead a life worthy of their calling. They have been called by God to lead a life of service to God and to humanity. And this calling only comes from God and God's election of the community. But Paul wants them to show their life with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in bond of peace. It's that second part of this verse that I want to look at further today. Bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Now when Paul is speaking of bearing with one another in love, he's speaking of unity. In fact, he even says that he's just to maintain the unity of the Spirit. And what is this unity? Why is it so important? What does it mean for us today? Well, Paul first really leans into the oneness of the church and the oneness of God. In the three verses, verses 4 through 6, he says this, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Notice that in these three verses, the word one is stated seven times. And when a word is stated seven times, we should pay attention to that word. The one body refers to the body of Christ, the church. It's composed of both Jews and Gentiles who are now one because of one spirit that called them all together to be one. And it is the one hope that brings this calling that the church is called to be. And in this hope there is one Lord, who is Lord over all. Again, this is Christ. And there is one faith in Jesus Christ, not many faiths and many gods. There is a unity statement here for those who were once in the pagan world where they were worshiping many gods. Now they are in one faith. There is one baptism. Now in the PCUSA, we only have one baptism. We do not rebaptize someone who was baptized in another church if they were to come here. That would take away from what Paul is saying here. Once you have been baptized, that's all there is. It may not be in the form that we do here, but a baptism is a baptism. There is only one, and that is into the church with a capital C, not into an individual church or a denomination. William W. Klein says this about baptism. He says, baptism represents the sole means of initiation into the one Lord. It is a fundamental proof of unity. Finally, we come to the one that is the foundation of the one statements. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. God is the one who makes all the other statements possible. That there is only one God. That God is, as it says, above all, through all, and in all. The one who brings the unity of the church. And in this unity, it is God who makes us one. Now Paul goes on to say that there are gifts that were given by Christ. 
And these gifts are given to the saints to work in the church to build it up, to make sure that the saints are on solid ground doctrinally and that they are growing mature in their faith. And these gifts are different. There are many different ones, but they are for the unity of the church. And they are to be used until we come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. This one word, until, is very important. This tells us that we are in the now and not yet moments of the church. The now is that we have been called by God and that our election is secure. The not yet, still waiting on the return of Christ and the building up of the church. In all of this, there is unity that Christ brings to the church. As Ralph P. Martin says, Unity is what we already have, since it is the work of the Spirit and the future aim toward which we must work. But one thing to remember is that unity is not uniformity. We are to be united in church and in Christ and in God. But we do not have to be the same thing as everyone else. We are not clones of one another. We are all different. Take a look around. Go ahead, take a look around. Do you see someone who is the same as you? We are all different. But we are here united in Christ. United in God. Now Paul tells us that there are different skills and different gifts in many of his letters. And that these are to help the church build up, to build the church up, but not to build up the individuals. William Klein says this again. He says, The church functions well because of God's gracious gifts, not as a result of the natural talents and abilities of its members. This is something well worth remembering when we think that our gifts are ours and that they are what builds up the church. We must remember that our gifts are given to us by God for the unity of the body that is in Christ. And Paul is telling the churches in, in Ephesians and the ones today that they are to be together, one body of Christ. Of being one in Christ is how they are to begin living with each other and how they are continuing to live with one another. They are to bring all different gifts that were given by God and they are to use those gifts for the unity of the church. They are to build up the church for the glory of God, not for the aggrandizement of the individual. And as we celebrate communion this Sunday morning, we are reminded that we are a community of individuals united in Christ. And this is a union that is across the world, not just here in our local church. It is a reminder that we are called to be the church and to be one in Him. Like the Avengers, we are to bring our individual strengths to a united team. We may be different, and that is fine. But we are to remember that we are one in Jesus Christ and in God who is above all and through all and in all. Let us be bound together in Christ so that we can go and do the good things that were planned for us to do long ago. Amen. Our affirmation of faith is the universal creed of the church, spoken in churches worldwide in different languages and by different people, but all communicating one thing, what we believe in Jesus Christ. It is the Nicene Creed, and let us state what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became a human. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we go now to the prayers of the people, I ask that you look over at page 6 of your bulletin to look over our prayer requests and our prayer concerns. And I ask, are there any that need to be added on this week? Travis, um, the family of Bernie Johnson, that would be my great aunt. Okay. She passed away. Okay. Bernie Johnson family. Travis. Yes, sir. I believe Darla Axtell was recovering from surgery and... Gerald Exdale is out with a sprained ankle. Okay, but Darla and Gerald are in need of prayers with foot injuries. Oh. A cousin, Tanya Collins, okay. has wrenched her back in some way and seeking out prayers. Stevens family. What's the last name? Stevens. Stevens. Stevens family. Any others? If not, let us go now to God in prayer. Let us pray. God of tears, you are the giver of joy. Hear us as we pray for the sick. We pray for those with chronic illness, for those who have life-threatening conditions, and for those with inadequate medical care. Bring the healing that we need. Hear us as we pray for all who are hungry. We pray for those who live in regions of drought and famine, for those who live in what is known as food deserts, where they cannot go to buy nutritious food. And we pray for those who cannot afford nutritious food. We pray for those who are vulnerable, who are not adequately fed. We pray that you give us the food that we need. We ask that you hear us as we pray for those who grieve. We pray for those who mourn a loved one, for those whose communities are no more, and for those who cannot imagine a joyful future. Give us comfort to restore hope. Hear us as we pray for the world's victims. We pray for those who are caught in violence, for those who are trapped in others self-seeking, for those who suffer from neglect, grant us freedom from evil. God of the poor and the poor in spirit, we pray for your help against all that oppresses as we look forward to the kingdom you have promised and are bringing even now through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. At this time, I would ask the Blatonies to come forward for just a few moments. The Blakeneys have come before the session.
and the church to request church membership and I'm pleased to announce that the session unanimously approved that. Uh, if there was any question, I don't know what that would be. <laughs> but we do welcome them here. I did have some questions, but I found out that I don't. <laughs> so we welcome you. And uh, at the end of the service, please welcome the Blakeneys into our congregation. Thank you. This is the joyful feast of the kingdom of God. It is said that they will come from east and west, from north and south, to sit at the table with all those in the kingdom. This is not a Presbyterian table. This is the Lord's table. It is open to all those who profess their faith in Christ and are united in one body. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to you, O God, for all your works. You created the world and called it good, and made us in your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us, and even when we turn from you, you remained ever faithful. Thank you, O God, for sending us your Son. He lived among us and told us your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and died our death, then rose to new life that we might live and all creation be restored. And remembering your boundless love revealed in Jesus Christ, we break bread and share the cup today, giving ourselves to you to live for him in joy and praise. Gracious God, Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and juice that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ and that they may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and one another until we feast with him and with all your saints in your eternal realm of justice and peace. Now it is through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever, as we pray the prayers that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, gave thanks for it, blessing it, and broke it, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. And in the same way, he took the cup, and pouring out the wine, he said, This is the cup of salvation, the blood shed for you. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do this in remembrance of me. If those who are going to uh, distribute the elements would please come forward.
bread of life given to you. Take and eat.